In this code demonstration, we're going to take a look at how we can actually create arrays in JavaScript. And we're going to take a look at some interesting um, aspects uh, about arrays. All right, so if I want to create an array in JavaScript, the usual way of doing that is actually to specify a variable like list and then simply use this open and close bracket notation just like this. And the result of this operation is actually to create an actual array. So if I say console.dir list and switch over to a web browser and load up my page, we'll see that we have in fact created an array. It has zero elements in it, um, but we have in fact created an array and it actually inherits from the array prototype. Now, if we wanted to initialize some list items in our array, all we have to do is come in and actually say, you know, like red, uh, blue, green. We can save that, reload this in our web browser, and now you'll see that we have an array with three items in it, red, blue, and green. Now, it used to be that in order to create an array, you actually use the array constructor. So the old way of creating an array was like this. So if we use the array constructor, this would actually create an array for us. We can actually come down here and do our console.dir old way, just like this. And we'll actually comment out this code for the time being. And then we can go back to our web browser and reload and you see that we have the same result. We have an empty array. Along with this constructor, we also had the ability to pass in some parameters. If we passed in one parameter, that was a number like this, this would actually create an array for us that had 10 empty slots. So now if we re reload, we'll see that we have an array here with a length of 10. Now you don't actually see any items and that's because the items are all undefined, but the array technically has a length of 10. If you specified more than one parameter, let's say we said 10, 20, 30, 40, what you ended up with was an array with four elements and then those were the initializing values. So now if I reload, you'll see I have an array here with 10, 20, 30, and 40. However, this syntax is really confusing because people would forget that if you only listed one uh, argument, you got an array of length 10, but if you specified two arguments, you got an array of length two with the value 10 and 20 for the two elements in the array. So now people prefer to use this much simpler and easier to understand bracket syntax for creating arrays. Now, something else that's different about arrays in JavaScript is that arrays in JavaScript are not really arrays. So for example, I have my list of three items here. And if I reload this in the browser, you'll see I have an array of three items, zero, one, and two. And there's a length of three. But check this out. If I come in here and I say list item 1000, and then we'll make this one black. Let's take a look at the resulting array in the web browser. The array now says that I have 1001 items. Okay, starting at zero and ending at 1,000 with a length of 1,001. Now clearly, I don't have 1,001 items in my array. In JavaScript, arrays are really nothing more than object maps. Basically, an array is an object that has numeric properties. So we have property zero, property one, property two, and property 1,000. Now, the length property here you know, does try to keep up with this and indicate that we have a thousand and one items because our last index is a thousand. But the truth is there are not a thousand and one items in this array. Now the key to successfully using JavaScript arrays is in fact treating them like arrays and not doing crazy stuff like this where we're specifying something with a index of 1000 and we have a huge gap between index two and index 1000. But at its heart, JavaScript arrays are really just object maps. And so you can create arrays that have holes in them um, and, and don't behave like other arrays do in other programming languages.